folks, welcome back to another episode of Momentum Monday. Today, we're covering Reddit's IPO, Weedstock's huge week, Micron's explosive earnings, what's going on with the Fed, and then we'll touch upon recent concern in luxury retail markets. Then we'll take a big picture look at indexes, what's going on with the banks, and finally wrap up with our stock picks for this week. My name is Tommy Trampo, and with us again is our chart ace, Ivanhoff, and of course, the Joker himself, Howard Lindzen. Today, before we start getting into the topics, quick PSA. We're looking for two scratch golfers to represent stock twits at the Grass Clippings Open. The qualifiers begin April 17th, and there's $100,000 up for grabs for the winning team. So if you have a serious golf game, drop us a comment down below and we'll be in touch. You know, we want to get the best of the best out there representing Stockwood. So let us know uh, if you're interested in uh, competing for 100K up top. So uh, jumping into topics for this week, the big story was Reddit's IPO. Uh, offer, initial offering price of $34 immediately uh, you know, started trading at around 48 um, so w what's the read there? Are we kind of hitting a IPO season again? Oh, wait, wait a second. I mean, who was the read? Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Howard. Well, it's a couple of things, you know, we'll, we'll tie it back into. I mean, I, I don't see any, anything special. You know, it... What's that? Go Can ahead, go ahead. Guys? Yes. Obviously, we have a lag again. Um, with, <clears throat> I think the lag is maybe from uh, switching to the sidebar, but um, did, I think the Reddit IPO <clears throat> also is a statement on the banks, <clears throat> excuse me, and just, you know, risk appetite in general, right? I think the last private round was $10 billion. I think right now it's probably trading at eight, even though it's up 50%. I, I don't know if we can pull any of that up as sidebar. You can use Koi Fin or, or FinChat maybe. Um, but to shout it out here, I've, what, what do we got the market cap at? Seven and a half billion. 7.5 billion. Yeah. So, so let's remember where this came from, right? This is a $10 billion market cap many years ago. Um, so it's still trading under, um, you know, the last round valuation, even after the, the big pump. I don't know who took it public. It was probably Goldman. Um, and, and that's the other thing we're going to talk about this week is, you know, look at Goldman's stock, right? So we're in, we're in this kind of sweet spot, yeah. Nirvana, where um, the government's after Apple. Um, the government's so busy trying to please every voter no matter how narrow their identity is um well the, sorry the democrats are doing that the republicans are just like trying to tell people uh vote for trump or the world's gonna end but so we're in this kind of sweet spot where people can do whatever the fuck they want and that means goldman and jp morgan are having their way uh, there are no rules so we should get this you know you know, kind of a sweet spot where companies can go public. Um, the real question is, um, you know, what happens after they go public? I think we saw this week that Instacart, you know, squeezed up above its IPO price, right? Like it got to its highest price. I think it's cart, um, Ivan, Ivan. And um, so look at that. That does not look like a normal chart. That looks more like a short squeeze within an IPO. So I think anything goes. The Reddit IPO, what it truly means that we talked about it last week is it's a representation of like kind of everything that goes on on the internet. And um, it's cool. Listen, I mean, the numbers are uh, of people that use it are staggering. And um, I'm sure Ivan doesn't use it, but I'm sure Tommy uses it as a young person. Um, but I can't, I can't comment too much on it other than the numbers are staggering because I'm not a Reddit user. But I think, like I said, overall, it, it talks to the fact that venture capitalists are getting a chance to get out. Goldman uh, is having a heyday. JP Morgan's having a heyday. Um, and the Democrats uh, are trying to get elected. And that just means, you know, 
uh, financials uh, and crypto have kind of a uh, free reign right here? Look, the market is uh, is starved for uh, for new issues, right? For for new stocks, and um, considering that it's been extremely hot since November of last year, it's uh, expected to see uh, more and more uh, companies uh, go public. Uh, but it's a different question if you should be chasing those IPO gaps uh, on day one. Because in most cases, you see a chart like uh, CART that is going to pull back initially and then it's going to form an IPO base and then it's going to break out and your proper entry is right here, right? 28 um, after a, an IPO base. So maybe something similar will happen with Reddit in, in some like extreme uh, periods of, uh, of risk on periods, we can see a stock just have an IPO gap and just go like we've had periods like where a stock would go up 50 to hundred percent after their first day of trading, but we're not there yet. Yeah. What do you guys think are some of the no brainer IPOs that are going to be coming next? I don't I know. Think, Howard is probably better equipped with, yeah, with I don't, that. You know, he, I think Databricks, which is kind of in right. snowflake, area will use this market to try and get public but i don't think there's any no-brainers i think what what makes a market interesting and go up are that the public doesn't you know to me these things happen when you don't know the names of the companies that are going public right like <clears throat> you know what are the hot categories um more importantly you're not going to get uh ev companies going public we've seen what they've done in the public market um so what's been working you know uh semiconductors and financials and the bankers aren't stupid they like to take thing and crypto and they can't take crypto public so um what you're seeing is a lot of meme coins because that's how you go public uh in crypto you uh, are gonna you're not gonna see another gold goldman's not gonna bring another goldman public so i don't think you're gonna see i don't think there's that many companies ready to be public um, that's part of the issue is you had this whole web two generation where, you know, you got, you got your IPOs, uh, Duolingo, which, you know, is not a huge company. You've got Uber and Airbnb, um, and you've got Instacart, um, you know, so I don't think the company, I don't think the world has many web two O businesses that, you know, because of the ZERP economy that are ready to go public. That's part of the problem. And I haven't pulled up earlier the IPO index that may have been the way we talked about it six months ago. It doesn't do a lot of volume, but that kind of is representative of the IPO index. And that looks, that's been looking pretty good off the bottom. Um, you know, I, I stick with the QQQ or the XLK. Maybe Stripe is one of the companies. Yeah, but it's not like everybody hasn't heard of it. And uh, you could have traded this through many different proxies at, you know, ad yen uh, for a while. Um, so, so, Tommy, I think it's more about, you know, what's working now. And that's financials, crypto and semiconductors. But keep going. Well, funnily enough, one of the other things that's working right now is weed stocks somewhat miraculously. And it seems like the legislative wins are starting to now favor the industry. Uh, you know, stocks like CGC pretty much doubled over this last week. What do you think of the action here? And, you know, is it tempting to kind of you know, play in these waters again? I mean, they're still in a huge, huge downtrend. So any uh, short term pop like this just you know, makes me skeptical. Yes, trade them short term, uh, like quick swings or <laughs> quick intraday. But I don't like I wouldn't put my long term money uh, in any of those stocks yet. Uh, they haven't proven themselves and there is still so much regulatory uh, hurdles that uh, they'll need to uh, jump over. Uh, but yet, this is one of the hottest sectors right now. And in the interesting part is that the MJ, which is the Canadian, mostly Canadian stocks, is doing a lot better than the US version MSOS right now. Uh, but yeah, both of them are, are starting to, to shape up and uh, potentially build uh, bases on a daily. 
So yeah, no. maybe the Canadians are doing better just because of banking rules. I, and maybe they have banking rules there that allow for it. But the U.S. doesn't matter how good the regulation headwinds are until you can actually deposit money and do easy banking. So um, it, I think it's just more a point of crypto you know, is speculation is alive and well, here's one that hasn't been speculated in a while. I mean, there's better ideas out there. I mean, I'm in a couple private uh, um, investments. A long time I've been an investor in Ease, which is, you know, kind of Uber. Now it's more of a retailer of, um, uh, oh, my dog's barking, of, of marijuana. <clears throat> and it's just, con you know, Company's doing well in terms of revenue side, but it's just so hard to make money in this business. And then on the on the selling of weed side, you know, the margins aren't great. So you can get weed everywhere. So uh, tough industry. Just, you know, it's got to be easier places to make money. Rooting for those guys. Uh, you know, CCGC is one of the most active streams we got on our site. The so guy. the interest is definitely there from, from the retail side. So. Yeah, hey, uh, ho hopefully the tides turn. Uh, one of the one of the art markets that seem incredibly hot wherever you look is what's happening. And semis, Nvidia made a lot of uh, you know hubbubaloo the last week with their keynote presentation, and then Micron reported their earnings last week and shot up from a huge kind of you know all time high uh, you know area. You know, wh wh what do you think of the action here? You know, is it still just incredibly hot? You know, same story as as we've been talking about. Yeah, semiconductors are still the best performing sector uh, year to date for a good reason, as um, the investments in the AI infrastructure are going to be massive in the next uh, several years. And yes, NVIDIA and some of the other semiconductors were the big winners so far, but now we're going to start seeing some of like secondary winners like Micron, uh, which, you know, they will provide the memory. Uh, which will be needed uh, in AI infrastructure in the servers. Uh, so major, major uh, earning surprise, over 200% earning surprise, uh, significant gap up near all time highs on 400, uh, on, on five times their uh, average daily volume. Finally, after 24 years, they cleared all, all time highs. Wow. Uh, Micron. So I think this report here could be the beginning of uh more to come and um so far this earning season we've seen quite a few um gap and goals uh, after strong earnings so i wouldn't be surprised if micron even though they're slow mover uh also joined that that group of stocks that uh they do really well uh even after big earnings gaps Yeah, I, I would add, I just added it to my watch list. Like, I have to say that uh, I thought I was following semis. You know, 145,000 people follow it, so it's not like underfollowed. But I just followed it. I Just what I've been said, 24-year breakout on a surprise earnings estimate. That's one, I wouldn't say you rush out and buy it Monday, but that is one that I'd be shocked um, if we see it you know, trade down much short term because there's so many people that obviously got caught by surprise there. And then you have, you know, the all time high and um, you have the hot sector and <clears throat> it's a pretty good story. I haven't just sprung saying they're actually going to benefit from my eye and the storage. You know, this company was losing money a couple of years ago. So to go from, you know, negative four bucks in earning to positive seven bucks in earning is that could be a, just a gap and not stop type deal. So that, you know, for people that want to chase, I, 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 I'm not a chaser, but that's one I would almost give a, uh, a green light to after, you know, it may not look back for a little while. Um, and I, and I think the opposite of that is Lulu, right? Like, so Micron's announcing, I mean, let's, let's do the opposite quickly. Segway into Lulu Nike. So you pull up a chart of Lulu and it's the opposite, right? Like, People expecting, you know, it's become a foregone conclusion that, oh, casual wear and, you know, Lulu's a bellwether in that. And I think JC had told me a couple of weeks ago he was getting short this, but 
I didn't see a reason to be short, but you can see what happens when everybody's expecting the same thing and that the casual wear is going to, you know, uh, it's a no brainer. They always going to win, but there's so much competition here for, for these margins. And at the mall, it, every mall store is now casual wear. So you go from, you know, um, Micron, which is a surprising breakout and the tailwind of AI to Lulu, which is a surprise, you know, miss. Um, and that comes from just so much competition in, in the casual, in the casual space. So, and, and then you look at Nike, um, and again, there's so much competition in this kind of, you know, where every day, uh, I mean, the chart's just a mess in Nike and then gap down again, uh, the other day, it's just chop soup. So, you know, this goes to like keeping, you know, for active investors, keeping your money in relatively strong sectors and the surprises work in your favor versus keeping your money in underperforming sectors and the surprises generally work against you. Go ahead, Ive. I mean, I think Nike and Lululemon, these are not industry problems. These are uh, company-specific problems. Uh, they just haven't figured out a way how to... Um, bring out products that people really want. And as we, as we know, fashion is cyclical uh, because right now, you know, all the rave is about uh, hookah, which, you know, is owned by Deckers. Um, Deckers is up like 200% in the past year. And also Onon, these are like the, the two major brands uh, Onon setting up here for a potential breakout, while Nike has been gapping down uh, three earnings season in a row. And the same with Lulu. I mean, their companies in, in casual uh, where they're doing amazing, like Gap just beat earnings estimates and it's been nonstop squeeze higher after their uh, earnings breakout. ANF, one of the best performing stocks in the past year, it went from 25 to 130, 140 in less than a year. So obviously there are hot segments in fashion and in shoes. Uh, and for whatever reason, Nike and Lululemon, they'll probably need more time to, to find their way. But they're companies with traditions and they'll probably uh, find their way and uh, their stock will come back at some point. But currently they're in a downtrend and there are easier ways to make money than buying a stock in a downtrend during a bull yep. market. No matter so, how much you love the, the company. You guys are saying the concern is is isolated to the stocks like Nike and Lulu, but you know the the Lulu CEO came out with some comments making a saying that you know there's been a change in the U.S. consumer with a slower start to the year in the U.S. than expected, and you also saw a huge kind of downside surprise from Dollar General and Dollar Tree after their reports as well. So is there any kind of larger macro concern here about the strength of the kind of U.S. retail consumer, or is this just an isolated story from the Nike and Lulu perspective? I think these are isolated stories um, because I can show you just as many retailers that, that just had record earnings and are doing amazing uh, post earnings like Target, uh, Williams-Sonoma, Our House, um, so with the, with the market so strong, unemployment so low, uh, wages going up, uh, real estate stable, I don't really see how there is a consumer problem. And obviously, no CEO is going to say, oh, we, we screwed up. Our <laughs> products are not as good and uh, our competitors are, are doing better than us. Of course, they're going to blame um, the macro environment on any uh, uh, mishaps. So, um, I think, you know, of course, you can take what you want from it, but there are companies that are, which stocks are thriving in this environment. And as market participants, we should be paying more attention to them and uh, owning them, trading them, than uh, paying too much attention to uh, any macro noise because it's, it's not really helpful uh, to the average investor to pay attention to that. Yes. So I haven't, I haven't nailed it there. I think... <clears throat> The market overall, like we said, financials, speculative, uh, new categories like crypto, infrastructure, 
and uh, semiconductors and hardware are doing well. We are in a bull market. I think what I can take away anecdotally, I talked to tons of kids, you know, for recruiting or, to our companies and my kids' friends. I spend a lot of time within their 20s. And Tommy, talking to you, I know this, is though they notice, man, they notice their anxiety levels are high about how high expensive it is to buy a home. Um, they go into restaurants and they notice when they're getting ripped. They know where inflation, like they know they're paying high prices for things. They get shocked. They have to sticker shock when they go into restaurant. That doesn't mean they're not going to spend. It means they're very discerning where they spend. And so like Ivan said, their habits will change based on if they're going to spend, they want to spend it on stuff that like Onan or, or sweet greens or where they're, they're, they're going to spend, but very hard to predict where they're going to spend. You can see it with Tesla, right? They're buying hybrids, right? They want to spend, but if they can't afford it, they're just going to, they're going to, they're going to go where they can afford and where their budget allows and where fashion allows them to kind of not get embarrassed. So, um, but they notice the number one thing and Tommy, maybe you can tell me is you notice when you're getting ripped off because you notice prices are higher uh, because of inflation at restaurants, travel, you kids are, you, I, my daughter just went to Mexico and she was complaining about a lot, you know, how, how, how she was getting screwed by the airline and the hotel, this, and the cat, you know, they're, they're starting to act like adults. You, you young people are starting to act like adults because you notice when you're getting overpaying for something and getting ripped off. Yeah, one of the you know, trending memes that went viral last week was when Chipotle had the news of their stock split and people were talking about how, yeah, it's of course when you have to pay $34 to get you know one burrito delivered to your house, uh, yeah, you would hope that stock is is doing pretty well. So yeah, no, there's definitely awareness as far as uh, you know, the increase in, in prices here. Uh, but you know, speaking of kind of huge macro noise events, and you guys seem to be pretty dovish when talking about the economy, you know, Powell is coming off you know, FOMC where he appeared to be, you know, as dovish as he's ever been, you know, when making comments on, you know, the state of the economy and the strength of uh, you know, markets right now. Um, any, any significant takeaways, uh, you know, after FOMC last week? Um, yeah. Yeah. So before we go to the FOMC, I just wanted to uh, mention uh, something regarding, uh, you know, all those uh, orderings on, on Dash and, and Uber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know they're expensive, so I'm surprised, and maybe that exists, you tell me if, if it exists, if there is a way anytime you order on Dash, on DoorDash, or on Uber Eats, if you can, automatically you can put 20% of whatever you're buying, if you're buying something for 20 or for $30, automatically put 20% into the stock of, uh, you know, whatever restaurant yeah. you're ordering from, if it's public, <laughs> that would be a great way for, you know, uh, younger people to take, uh, take a look at dash stock. It's, it's incredible. It's like one of my best, I, I put it in my IRA. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, as you're paying, you know, $5 delivery fee, whatever other fees, can you just put every single time, every time you order $5, you know, into the stock of those companies, um, automatically without even thinking, um, but yeah, let, let's go to the, um, FOMC, uh, the market was a bit worried uh, going into into the FOMC. That's why we saw like a little dip right before the events in in small caps uh, and in tech stocks as interest rates um, were rising ahead of the, the meeting because we had several um, inflation reports in a row that came above estimates like both uh, uh, consumer uh, Inflation report and producers inflation report uh, came above estimates the, the last few times. And everyone was thinking that the Fed is going to be a little bit more concerned and hawkish, but that didn't happen. Powell came and he said, basically, everything is going according to plan. Um, all of the FOMC um, board members expect to have at least 75 basis points of interest rates cuts by the end of the year and then more than a percent in 2024. Uh, so everything is going according to their plan. They're not worried about the the light uptick in inflation in January, in February. Uh, and the market really liked that. As, and you saw that uh, monster bounce on Wednesday and the strong close um, towards the end of the week for many stocks. 
uh, S and P, uh, the QQQ, they uh, finished near all time highs. The small cap, uh, you know, they had a decent bounce, but they're definitely the the weaker performing ones. Um, semiconductors bounced. I mean, Nvidia recovered very quickly from its uh, rising to uh, 20 day and it's setting up again. Um, so it's interesting to see Nvidia right now has 2.36 billion um, trillion dollar valuation and it's getting very close to Apple, which is like 2.66 trillion. So only 10% away. And that's some, that's a move that can happen in a week. Uh, for NVIDIA to become the, the second most valuable company in the world, obviously Microsoft being still the number one with 3.2 billion. And Microsoft and NVIDIA, these are the two companies that the market currently is saying, these are the two biggest winners uh, of the AI revolution uh, so far. But well, there'll be a, a lot more, many more yeah, smaller they, companies who also they, benefit. They don't have regulation headwinds right now in a way, right? Microsoft <clears throat> creatively went around the FTC um, by, you know, aqua hiring uh, the team from a competing AI company, Inflection AI, and Apple just got slammed by, um, again, it's almost a joke, right? Like Apple has, Apple is tough on app developers, but at the same time, if you're building an app in 2024, uh, maybe maybe you shouldn't be in business, right? Like, point right now is to be building on the web and to be building in crypto and to be building in AI. So if you're relying on an app, uh, you're kind of a generation old. Um, and, and the government's suing Apple for stuff they did uh, 10 years ago. Right now, the only, th you know, if you want a blue bubble on your phone, you switch to Google or, you know, depending on if you want a green bubble or blue bubble, you switch. You got a choice, Apple or Android. Um, so, so while well, the government's going to be wasting a lot of uh, time and money of Apple's and ours um, suing Apple, you know, Microsoft's figured out a way around it through acquisitions and NVIDIA continues to power forward uh, pretty much unchecked. And um, so, you know, where there's less friction, that's where the money goes. Again, I think I think what you have to talk about with the Fed is look at JP Morgan and, Go and Goldman Sachs and say they these people are going to, I mean, I call it evil. Evil is roaming the streets right now. These these companies know how to make money, right? Unlike a lot of other companies. And what these breakouts, you know, JP Morgan broke out well ahead of Goldman Sachs. These companies know how to make money and they sense, the market is sensing that these companies, you know, that is a big ass breakout by by these two big banks. So while it's crappy for, for regional banks that have the carry trade on uh, JP Morgan or the, the bad yield trade, um, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are in free roaming uh, country. XLF also look at, look at the, the XLF index, which is kind of a little more conservative. Uh, yeah, the regionals are not the way to own this. But X, you know, the financials are. So Coinbase has rallied. Um, Robinhood doubled. But the Goldman breakout is the most interesting thing to me because if you think there's going to be IPOs, uh, Goldman is going to to benefit the most. And um, and if you want to bet on crypto, the leverage play to own crypto is Coinbase because that's where all the tokens that go public or whatever you call them uh, get manifest themselves, get, get traded is on Coinbase. So, um, this is like just unbelievable bullish, you know, activity for people that like stocks, right? Taking the macro out of it. What, what Powell is saying is showing up in JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and in Coinbase and in NVIDIA. Um, it's just unfortunate for Apple. They're caught up in the government you know, uh, and, and that's going to be hard for Apple to, to make progress period, end of story. So that's the story. And, and, and the feds, you know, many smart people that I read think the fed should be raising rates, but the fed still Powell's still talking about, or at least the market still believes that the next three rate, uh, moves are going to be down. So the market's still pricing in Powell is going to lower rates. 
at a time when a lot of people, the bearish people, think he should be raising rates. And so everybody's kind of caught. And that's probably pretty good for stocks, or at least pretty good for buying the dips. So I think everything, every chart we've shown today, other than Lulu and Weed and Nike, um, well, Weed's actually kind of got positive uh, little spikes, but everything except Lulu and Nike yeah. has been, what the hell are we talking like? There is nothing but upside and, you know, opportunity out there. So. So we were on a space this week with Tom Lee talking about Bitcoin and he gave us a 150K price target for end of the year. Is that, you know, are you guys on the same page with that? Is that, is that where you could see that going as far as when you look at it to take a bigger picture, pick, bigger picture look at crypto? I don't do I price think targets. I mean, I it comes fun. to Bitcoin or any cryptocurrencies. I, uh, it's, yeah, it's impossible to have a price target. I mean, Tom Lee, the, one of the reasons I'm not a fan, everybody's a fan of Tom Lee, it seems, because he's been right. Uh, you, you know, people forget how wrong he's been, too. When you make these crazy price predictions, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to unpredict them, right? So he's just caught up in the hoopla of being, you know, a famous person right now, and that's generally dangerous. Uh, I didn't listen when people shout out targets. I tend to ignore them unless I am, happen to be standing around listening to the to the reasoning. Um, but JC walked us through, you know, above seventy thousand on Bitcoin. It could easily, based on you know um, prior ranges, go to a hundred thousand. I, I don't need to see why it would double again. I mean, I'm bullish. Um, just. I am on Bitcoin, but you know I own some, but I have no idea on the price target, and I and I don't listen to Tom Lee. Any thoughts there, Ivan? I agree with what Howard said. As he said, Bitcoin. I mean, it's it's impossible to value to put a market cap on uh, on them, so you know they could easily be. You know, ten thousand or a hundred thousand. Uh, none of that would would have, would have really surprised me. As of right now, considering all the the new ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, and um, so many people owning Bitcoin with the intention to hold longer term and uh, not really sell, and the small float, I wouldn't be surprised in a hot bull market for it to continue to to go up. But then it will also correct uh, significantly during market corrections. So that's, it will be the more interesting part to me to yeah. see if there is a correlation during market uh, corrections, if Bitcoin is really going to co continue to correct much further than uh, the market indices when, when we have the inevitable corrections, uh, because we always have them. Like every single year, there is at least 10% market, 10, 15% market pullback and some years, you know, much bigger. All right. I had to get that out. Appreciate the comments, guys. All right. So uh, let's wrap this up. Howard, I feel like we know your stock pick for the week. It's, you know, Banks, Goldman. Uh, and if you guys are looking for more content along those lines, check out G Pies' stream on StockTwits. He's also been all over XLF and the bank plays. So if you're looking for more chart setups on banks, check out G Pisa on StockTwits. Ivan, any other plays that stand out for you as far as next week is concerned? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the plays that I'm looking at is um, AMD, since it's kind of holding here, it's rising 50 day and that level here is around 175 is also it's um, year to date uh, volume weighted average price. Uh, and since Nvidia has been so strong, this is something I'll be paying attention for a potential bounce, at least towards its 20 day, like 190, uh, 200, since it is one of the stocks uh, likely to benefit from the AI revolution the most. So if this is the case, then we will continue to see those dips getting bought. And, you know, lately it's definitely showing some relative weakness here on that pullback, especially compared to NVIDIA. So uh, this, this is one of the stocks I'm watching next week for a potential uh, bounce. Love it. All right, the streams are going to like that one. Any final thoughts, Howard, for the, for the boys and the streams out there? 
No, I can't believe how I'm looking at the comments. Can't believe how poor stocked with golfers are. I thought there'd be some ringers out there. That they, the the only thing it seems like uh, people are honest about on stocked with is their handicap, which is uh, which is funny. But you know, I think it'll be an incredible event. Um, we we uh, I've been I've played the golf course. It's going to be an incredible event. Um, we've got to find if it's not if it's someone you know on stock twits, like let's get some plus fours out there. Weather will be great. Uh, we'll be there. Maybe Tommy will be there. Uh, so uh, send along names. Yep. If you got golf game, let us know. All right. That's us for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good one, guys. See you.